like 7.09 sunrise is in about 10 minutes. I drove out here to one of my favorite hikes. And actually, really, this is my favorite hike in the San Francisco Bay Area for three reasons. Number one, very few people come here. You can see there's just a couple cars in the lot. There's a huge amount of places to go backpacking. So they're probably not even around here. Number two, it's actually a very easy hike. There's many, many hikes that you can do, some of which are very, very difficult. But there's a really great hike that's like three or four miles out, three or four miles back. Super easy because it goes along a creek. And so, you know, it's the kind of thing you can do with a kid. It's the kind of thing you can do even if you don't have the energy to do a big giant hike. And the third reason is actually that it's that it's close. So but from the Silicon Valley with no traffic, which of course is like well, the reason I came this so early, it's like 45 minutes. So very, very doable. I've done this hike many, many times. It's nice to do hikes over and over again because then you get to kind of experience the same place in different season or just with a different vibe. All right. So I just got here. I haven't done I have not got out of the car yet this morning, so I need to go to the bathroom and then get my stuff ready to go on the hike. So one problem going hiking at sunrise in the winter is it is in the 30s outside. It is very hard for me to get for me to get motivated to get out of the car. Now I actually needed to sit here for a little bit because I needed to have something to drink. I actually had iced tea this morning. I was gonna make coffee, but it's so cold that I don't feel like making coffee, which is weird because coffee would be hot, but I don't know, I'll tell you. And I had some protein bars just to kind of get me started this morning as far as breakfast and caffeine goes. Next thing I need to do is pull out my hiking stuff. I have my backpack in the trunk, but it's kind of in the back of the trunk and my hiking poles are back there. My jacket is in the back here. You know, so I have a bunch of kind of assembly things and then I need to pack up some food to have with me. My thought is to go on the full hike of like, I don't know, six miles. So that's, that's hours. I'm very slow. That will take me hours to do. So, Oh, that means I need to have food with me. I don't really need like a meal with me, but I do want to have some more food than just the two protein bars that I had for breakfast. So I don't know if that was those people are hiking or backpacking, I mean, and, or if they're actually sleeping in those vehicles. Like I actually wonder, there's another vehicle over there. I don't think you can see. Oh, I wonder if people actually sleep here sometimes because you totally could like it's against the rules. Don't be wrong but you'd probably get away with it at least for one or two nights, assuming that you have a, a pass and I have a park, a pass for the California state parks. And this is a state park. I wonder, and I'm actually, the reason I'm specifically wondering right now is because I'm going to be filming and, you know, is someone going to be sitting in their car listening to me and entertained? Uh, I don't know. I actually am putting on all my extra layers now. I really don't have enough. Let's see if I have. Might need one more layer. It's really hard to figure out what to bring when it's really cold. warm enough because I'm going to be hiking. Oh, I need my hiking poles. One thing I realized is I don't know where my gloves are. Oh, I know. They got damaged in the... My gloves got damaged. I need new gloves. Ready to go. I got my backpack on. Everything packed up in my car. My hands are so cold. I can't even explain to you. I do not, for some reason, on my car. I do not, for some reason, have gloves. I own gloves, but my old gloves that were good actually were damaged. 
and then I haven't bought new gloves. So I need to get some gloves that would be good for hiking because the kind of gloves that you have, like different gloves for different purposes. Oh my gosh, my hands are so cold. All right, I'll put my phone away for a little bit so I can warm my hands. So I was a little bit worried that the creek doesn't have water in it, but it does not, which is a good thing for me because water crossings wasn't something I really necessarily wanted to do when it's 30 something degrees outside. So this park is Henry Coe State Park. It is the second largest park in California. It is, it is a huge, huge space. This park used to be ranch land and stuff. And then got donated. Oh, you can see a horse horse thing from water. Um, so there's all kinds of random stuff left over from when it was a ranch or multiple ranches maybe. It has tons of fire roads crossing it. There actually was a really big fire here back when all the fires happened around fall of 2020 was it like in september i think august i can't remember anyway this is what one of the big fires was not here where i'm standing but way farther in not to a place we're going to be going today this park is so big you could go hiking for a week here i mean you're not gonna going to run into people and you can spend huge amounts of time and never go to the same place i have gone backpacking here once but what i've realized is i need to kind of figure out how to backpack in this i mean i've been backpacking many many times in my life but as someone who has all kinds of health issues and stuff i also needed to figure out a lightweight maybe an ultra light backpacking setup since now i'm be bringing a CPAP with me you know that's a lot of weight CPAP itself is actually pretty light but weigh something the battery packs are things that will be heavy but i definitely want to be able to do that It'd be a nice backpack here but a lot of other places i would love to be able to even just coming out for one or two nights like two nights would be amazing i could go so far if i could actually backpack on the way this is a very flat trail i mean it goes a little bit ups and downs but very flat overall but i think i'm breathing like this because it's so cold you can see the frost hold on Look at that. So I guess it did get to freezing or at least enough for it to frost everything. So I learned a couple things. One is I actually need another top base layer kind of thing. So I have all kinds of legging, long underwear, things for the bottom part of me. But I don't have actual hiking layers for the top part. I think because for so long I would go hiking when it's not super cold. Now, historically, I used to have that stuff, but I don't anymore. I, don't, I guess those things didn't fit me, whatever. I don't know. I got rid of them for some reason. So I actually need top base layer, like a long underwear or whatever base layer for the top of me. And I think I also need a like hiking sweatshirty kind of thing one more layer like right now i have a just long sleeve t-shirt on i need a layer below that and a layer above that and then i need gloves my hands like are kind of like i can't use my hiking poles because my hands keep needing me to go in my pockets well this one is actually recording you can see how my cheeks are all pink so if you see on my face you may think those bumps are acne no they're mosquito bites because there's a mosquito in my car so that's a good time every night gives me one more bite on my face and they itch i mean it's definitely a mosquito bite i saw the mosquito once that's how i knew it was a mosquito so <laughs> i'll tell you Fun fact, years ago, I was in the Wall Street Journal and the photo for that article about me 
was here. This is where the photo was. I actually took it myself using my GoPro on a tripod. And I don't even have a GoPro anymore. But, and there's an article about my kind of alternative lifestyle or whatever. Uh, so I'll see if I can find it. If it still exists online, I'll link it below. So you can see the random fences and all kinds of stuff that exist here because it used to be a ranch. And even, look at that. It's one thing that's nice about this place too. So we have a bunch of random picnic tables. You wanna like stop and sit and take a rest, have a picnic. They do some plowing here, I think. It actually is a fire thing because you know, there was a fire here and they need to have spaces where they can make fire breaks. That's what I'm imagining it is for. They don't do it everywhere, but they do it at certain spots along these fire roads. So most of the hikes here are actually fire roads, which means they're really hard unless they're flat. I tried to do some of them where I, I literally couldn't. <laughs> I couldn't at all. It's like going straight up a mountain. But they actually have, over the years, cut some real hiking trails that have switchbacks and everything like that, which I did the first week I lived in my car. This was the first place I came to do a hike and I did it on the trail that has switchbacks. But today, yeah, I'm just doing this fire road. Eventually it turns into a trail, but most of the time it's a fire road. That's just little bitty ups and downs. As I walk along this trail, there are tons of offshoots, mostly on the other side, but this one's on this side. It's nice because if you ever want to just go off on your own, you have that option. Now, one thing that's hard about this trail is since it follows a creek, if you need to go to the bathroom, you have to go up in the side because you have to get away from the water source, right? So that's slightly annoying, but not really a huge deal, obviously. So yeah, this is one of the reasons I like this trail is because it's an out and back and you start at the bottom and you're going uphill for lack of a better word. It's not really that much uphill. It means that it's downhill on the way back. So you can kind of push yourself on the way and on the way back, you know, it's downhill back to your car. There's another entrance to this park that's the top of a hill. And so if you hike there, you're hiking down and up. It's, it's actually very hard because you have to leave reserve in your water, you have to leave reserve in your energy to get back up to where your car is. I like, I try to always pick up and down hikes versus down and up hikes, if it's possible. Sometimes you can't because it's some like thing you want to see, but generally that is definitely what I favor because it's so much easier for me. I can push myself on a hike knowing it's just down on the way back and I can get back there. The other reason, I don't go to the other entrance very often. I used to go there, but is it's just, it has a visitor center and a small campground and it's so just busier, you know? There are times where they actually run out of parking and when it's busy, when there's flowers and stuff like that. Now this place gets hot in the summer. Now I've hiked here in the summer, but I've come here really early in the morning, like how I am here now. I almost always go hiking early in the morning. But, oh, when I'm by myself at least. But in the winter, it's really nice because there's so few people here, but it's still, it's sunny enough that you get, you get warmed up. And obviously, you have enough layers. You can hike in most conditions, especially if it's not, you know, windy or snowing or raining or something. It's not that hard to stay warm once you're moving. This is leftover barbed wire. On the other side is still state park land. This is just leftover from when it used to be something else. Yeah, you hear that? It's so nice. I've seen zero people. All I'm listening to are sounds of birds and bugs and little teeny animals. They don't have big animals here. I think the biggest thing they have around here is probably deer and turkey. 
I've seen turkey. I don't think I've seen deer in a really long time around out here, but I know they exist out here somewhere. But mostly it's just birds and bunny rabbits and stuff. It's so kind of lovely and adorable. That is one nice thing about hiking somewhere like this. You're not going to have a bear problem, you know. Like you can't, you you and things that can get into your food, but it's going to be more like mice giving it to your food. Let's go up here and check out. See if fish pond has any water. Well, that looks kind of gross, but. There's still a pond here for the animals, at least. I'm not drinking out of that. <laughs> I have plenty of water. So this area is the first place that I tried to do backpacking in recent times. Like, I went backpacking when I was younger, you know, teenager and stuff, but I hadn't gone in my 30s. So right over there by that tree was where I set up my tent. I thought it was gonna be this nice place. It's not that far away from my car, you know. I hung up my food in a tree. All that. Camping by a big water source is not a good idea. So it was a full moon, so I could see like shapes outside the tent, you know, like through the tent walls. And it was so noisy all night long. And it, it's not like scary animals. Mostly it was birds and deer and things like that, but they made a lot of noise. These flocks of turkeys. They are huge animals and they take off flying. I actually didn't know turkeys flew. I guess I thought they were like, what are those things that don't fly? Like ostriches and emus and things. Anyway, the turkeys would take off flying all together and make such a loud racket. It would freak me out. So I wasn't actually like objectively scared something bad was going to happen. It was just I couldn't rest because my brain was just like, what is happening? I learned a lesson. Camping right next to a water source is a bad idea. That's, it's still chilly, but I've warmed up because I've been hiking for a little while now. I haven't decided how far I'm going to go today. Part of the reason is that I realized I don't have a lact any lactate pills with me. And so the other bar I brought, I need a pill for. So I had my protein stick, my meat stick. So I have pretzels to eat, but I don't really have like my other bar. We'll see. We'll see if I get hungry and... I think that I need to eat more. Like, I mean, I can eat all those pretzels. Well, not all of them. I can eat a bunch of pretzels. And then, of course, when I get back to my car, I have tons of food. But. So that's another thing that is going to get into my pack is a stack of lactate. So I don't have to always remember. So I bring with me each time I bring something that needs dairy. I can't believe I forgot that. It's so weird. I have them stashed in so many places. I thought they were in the kind of first aid emergency stuff in my bag. Maybe they were and I ate them all up. All right, so I think I'm gonna make a decision about turning around or not based on my blood sugar. So knowing when I ate breakfast that I need to eat in about four hours, all things being equal, if I don't have other food, then I would turn around in two hours. Right. It'll take me a little less time to go back than go this way, but about the same. So that though, I do have snacks. I do have the pretzels. So I may test my blood sugar and see where I'm at to decide do I actually need to turn around or am I good for a while? I actually don't have as much, like I, I, I usually have a whole bunch of stuff in my backpack, like seasonal all the time, but I guess I ate it the last time I went hiking. So I did a very poor job of putting stuff in there. I think I blame the coldness. I'm not used to packing stuff up for a hike when it's 30 something degrees. My hands are so cold because I don't have gloves anymore, apparently. I need to buy some hiking gloves. So I did not do the best job. As you can see here, I'm going through another one of the dry creeks. So there are times where these are all have water in them. I've had times where I had to wear my hiking sandals and traverse them all. Now, if they had had water in them, it would have depend. Like if there's a certain amount of water, I actually wouldn't have done it. I don't know if I'm going to go hiking in my range gouache shoes because I haven't done it before. I wouldn't want to start out with that. I don't know. I could hike a little bit. The problem is they're kind of big, so I wouldn't want to like carry them. You know, I don't know. 
but if it's 30 degrees, I definitely don't want wet feet. I love these trees. They're so kind of neat and magical. I'm at the end of the road, yay! So as I said, you can just keep going. Go another three miles, you get to a camp. There's actually a, I think there's a bathroom there. Not, I mean, obviously not running water, but a pit latrine there. But I'm gonna hang out at this picnic table for a bit. All right, so, sitting on a nice picnic table. Got my, oh, what was that, by the way? Got my water, got my pretzels out. I'm gonna have a snack and relax. <sighs> One of these days, I'm going to keep going on this trip. <laughs> uh, this is probably the place I'll come to do my first backpacking once I get a backpack again and everything because it's so easy to backpack here. It's not expensive. It's not hard to get. Um, you don't have to like apply for anything. because There's not that many people who are backpacking here. So you're not going to be, you know, crowded. And like I'm, you know, miles from my car, but it was an easy hike to get up here. I could camp here. Like at this picnic table, well, on, this, on top of the picnic table, like right, I put a tent right around here. People would come by, but that'd be fine. So, and there's actually a water source over there. I mean, it definitely needs to be a filter, but there is a water source. So, and then of course you can keep going. So this might be the first place I come backpack. I'm not planning to get a backpack until I get my next vehicle because I have nowhere to put it. And that's kind of the plan of the Subaru Outback is within my rooftop box. The rooftop box is going to have the stuff I don't have, you know. It's going to have the stuff like a backpack and other, you know, snowshoes and like all kinds of gear that I have absolutely no room for. It'll also, that's all I keep my dirty laundry and my trash and some of this, a few things that are actually in my trunk right now, some emergency supplies and things like that. But otherwise, it will create a whole bunch more room for me to have more gear with me as I travel. Yeah. So, all right, I'm going to enjoy my snack and relax. I'm not testing my blood sugar because the I guess the battery is low on my glucose meter. So, well, I just have to proceed. I don't feel bad or anything. I was actually more just curious where I'm at. This wasn't a horribly hard hike or anything, and I have snacks, so I'm not. It's not like an emergency by any means. But a lot of times when I do hikes and things, I think it's good to check my blood sugar to see because it's different, you know, what I'm doing that day. But I guess I'm not doing it right now. So it is. 9 42 a.m and i've seen zero zero people out here there were the three cars when i got there which may be people either backpacking or people sleeping in their cars i don't know so my kind of place i actually am thinking like trailheads can be a good place to sleep in your car i would say if you have like an rv kind of situation then it depends because then you look like you might be sleeping in it right but if you're in something that's stealthy, where the person could be parking their car there and going on a backpack um, trip, then, and, and obviously this is assuming you can backpack there. Right? It's not just a trailhead for day hikes. But if it's a trailhead for overnights, it can work. It really depends on where you are, how hyper they are about their permitting system, and, you know, whether, like here, you pay to backpack. But I mean, it's not like you have to get a permit or anything. Maybe they come once a day. I mean, it. You could if you pulled up here in the evening, spent the night and left. I don't think anyone's here. You know, it's the bathroom and a place to park. You know, so that is something that is good. I mean, I, there's no internet there, so it's not great for every purpose. But, but yeah, trailheads can be a good place. And the biggest thing is because a lot of trailheads have a bathroom, at least a pit toilet. So having that facility really makes a big difference. It makes things a lot easier. Oh, and I want to show you what I bring with me so I can go to the bathroom. And this is just for peeing. So 
a Ziploc bag with toilet paper in it or tissue or, you know, something that you can wipe yourself with. And then a antibacterial wipe and to wash my hands with, which is what I'm going to do. This way you put those things both in that Ziploc bag, everything is self-contained. So when you go back, you have one thing to throw away. Okay, so now I'm on my way back. Now that way, as I said, you can go for days and days. That way actually goes to an ecological reserve. I think you can go that way. At a certain point, it'll run out and go to private land. But yeah, you can just, this is a place where you can hike for so long. It is really neat. And as you can see, in the winter at least, nobody else is out here. And I've been in here, I've been out here the height of summer and I'll see maybe five other people when you get out to this part out here. There's just not a lot of people out here. Now the other entrance, there'll be people at most times of the year. Um, the only time I've gone there and had no other people was I went there when it was raining. And I love hiking in the rain. It all depends on where you are. This one, hiking in the rain is a problem because they have all those creek crossings. But if you go hiking the other one in the rain, you get rid of people. And obviously you don't want to be like torrential pour, downpour, but it is a nice steady rain. I have my, you know, jacket and pants and it was great. My feet got wet because my shoes, which are probably might have been these shoes or shoes just like them, were not waterproof by any means. <laughs> so I, I think I should try sometime hiking in those rain boots, like a short hike in the rain to see how they do, you know? And not as a rain boots, the sense of keeping my feet dry, they would totally do that, but in the sense of like hiking in them, you know, is it hard on me? They're heavier than my rain boot shoes, you know? So I don't know. But that might be a, a video for another day, is hiking in the rain boots. So you can see that trail goes literally like straight up that hill. Like some of these trails here. <laughs> I've absolutely like like I don't know who is hiking up that I'm assuming it's for horses maybe bicycles mountain bikes to go on because I mean that's just that ain't happening for me at least okay I'm back at the car I did not film the rest of it because I was getting warm and so I took off layers which had none of my layers had pockets but my phone inside my backpack <sighs> yeah I am now in a tank top <laughs> even though it's still cold outside because I'm so warm so I'm gonna make myself a sandwich still here there's no internet here but i'm just gonna chill here for a while because i've actually know where i have to be today because i got all my work done so i am good today i will probably check email later today when i get back to places where there's internet but in the meanwhile i'm just gonna sit here and eat my food make a nice chicken salad wrap kind of a thing and chill out and then head back and do the rest of my day so that was a total of about four hours so yeah it was a really nice hike uh i was kind of over at the end because i really had to be <laughs> and there's not a lot of good places i didn't see anybody until i got back to the parking lot right as i was getting back to the parking lot there were two people on bikes who were loud talking but they were on bikes so i kind of understand it who you know said hi and as they were leaving and then i saw one guy just get here right now just i think he was just using the restroom there's a couple more vehicles but i didn't see any of those people on the trail that i was on so they must have gone a different way so yeah it was very good oh one more thing i was gonna say before i go is you see how i have a wrist brace on <laughs> no one's asked about that yet i only had it in the last couple of videos so the reason i have a wrist brace is that i have tendonitis in my wrist elbow shoulders and sometimes it acts up I sometimes I go months or even a year or two with no problems and then all of a sudden it starts acting up I won't even do anything it'll be like I'll just lean the wrong way and there you go and so I have the wrist brace on primarily at night or when I'm doing any activities which of course hiking with hiking poles really important to keep the wrist safe so that's what's going on with that. I've had, I actually was diagnosed with this 20, yeah, five years ago, a long, long time ago. So this is one of those things that everybody has kind of their Achilles heels. And this is one of mine. Again, this is Elizabeth off grid. If you want to just say hi, please stop by in the comments below, or you can talk about what you love about hiking, your favorite places that you hike, any of that kind of stuff. Also gear that you like too. Cause while I do have really good hiking gear now, I don't have any backpacking stuff. So I'd love to hear about that. Otherwise, like, subscribe, all the things. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.